Some of you are probably like, is this a trick question? Of course I should get a cow. I know when I started dreaming about homesteading and then when we first bought our property, I dreamed about milk cows. I talked about them, thought about them, read about them. I knew that that was something that I wanted. But the question is not, do you want a milk cow? The question is, should you get one right now? The goal here is to make you aware of some of the challenges, but also to encourage you that if this is what you decide you should do, that you can do it. And not just for you who haven't gotten a cow yet, but also for some of you who maybe have been doing it for a while and you're feeling a little burnt out because having the right mindsets and the right systems in place can make it a whole lot easier. Come on, Maddie. Probably the biggest thing is being willing to be here every single day. Milking a cow is not something that you can just choose to do whenever, like weeding a garden. You know, the weeds start coming up and you're like, you know, I need to do it, but I gotta do something else today. I'm gonna do it tomorrow. You can do that with weed in the garden, but you can't do that with milking a cow. I know there are some people who do a form of calf sharing where they leave the calf on all the time and then just pull it when they want milk. And you can do that, but that also does take a lot of dedication. For some people that choose to milk twice a day, that you want lots and lots of milk, you gotta be there morning and evening, every single day. And that's the reason why we've chosen to only milk once a day, because I can milk in the morning, get done, and then I'm done for the day. If you do get a milk cow, I would highly, highly recommend a two bucket system like this. This works really well to keep the milk cleaner and there's ice cubes in here cooling it so that it's cooling a lot faster. As we go through this video, I wanna weave in a little experiment that I'm trying. It is really important to cool the milk down as fast as possible because if there is bad bacteria in it, it will really slow it down from growing once it gets down to like, it's I think it's 55 degrees. What we have been doing is using a frozen water bottle. It is plastic and I don't like having that in my milk. And it also has the lid that can come on and off and there's a crack up in there where stuff can get up in. If it's not cleaned out really good, you can have bacteria growing in this. I do think this is a viable option, but it's maybe not the best option. I just bought these and these are stainless steel whiskey cubes. They're meant for drinking whiskey, you drop it in there and it'll cool down your drink without watering it down. Well, this is like the perfect idea for a milk bucket. These are an inch and a half. This is the biggest I could find. It's not quite as much ice as what this water bottle is, but it's more surface area. So I wanna try putting these in my milk bucket and see how well it cools the milk compared to the water bottle. These buckets are seamless stainless steel and to me that is really, really important. There's no rolled edges, there's no welded on pieces. It's all one piece bucket and then the handles go through the holes. There's nowhere for bacteria to build up. You can get these buckets on Shenandoah Homestead Supply and I've got a discount code for their website. I'll drop that in the description below so that you can get these for having your own milk cow. One of the first things you have to come to grips with is that you can't be idealistic. We do everything basically organic here on our homestead, but there's some places where you just gotta kinda choose your battles. And one of those places for me is fly spray. So I've tried a bunch of different natural fly sprays, different ways of doing it, and nothing has worked for me. And my cow Maddie here, she'll get like all lumpy and bumpy and swollen on her neck if she gets a lot of fly bites. And the only way that I've been able to take care of that is by using a conventional fly spray. This one is called Farm and Dairy CV ADD, and it is specifically for dairy cattle. And that's one thing that I wanted to make sure of so that at least hopefully it's a little better, a little safer than just anything out there but it's something that I've had to choose to do to keep her from getting all swollen and stuff. And now after I say that, I don't recommend just taking the easy route every time. Like if you have a problem just to go and get something chemical, get something conventional that isn't gonna be good for your cow or for your farm in the long run. Most things can be taken care of holistically and I really encourage you to do that. But basically what I wanna get across is that your mindset can't be a mindset of idealism. Letting your ideals and what you think the way things should be, get in the way of you actually being successful. Cause that's what I want for you. I want you to be successful and be able to do this for the long run. First part of our experiment here is nothing in the extra bucket. I'm just gonna put this screen on top, take this out there, pour the milk in, take the temperature when we come back in. Two degrees so tomorrow morning we will stick a water bottle in here a frozen water bottle and we'll see what temperature that is one thing that I do want to throw in here too is that cows are animals not people 
they are not going to need the same things as we people need. Remembering that they are animals and not people I think is a key thing in being actually truly successful with this because I think some of the mindsets that come along with trying to turn them into people or even into really cute pets can get in the way of what actually needs to be done on a homestead. There are obviously things that cows need though. They need shelter, they need a fence, they need hay, they need water. Those things are super important and getting those things as good but yet as simple as possible is really key to being successful. I think shelter is something that really intimidates people and it is really not as complicated as it's often made out to be. All you really need for a cow is some kind of three-sided shelter. You can see this lean-to right here on the side of my barn isn't even three-sided. It's just a roof with one wall on that side. Now that is not the only shelter they get in the winter. That barn door opens up into just a small stall area, but then it's just a three-sided shelter. This was actually an old corn crib that I turned into a barn. It was pretty simple to build and you can just do something very, very simple. That's all that a cow needs. Because unlike us, they were designed to be able to take the harsh weather. Oftentimes in a winter storm, my cows won't even be inside of that shelter. They'll be out in the snow. During a thunderstorm, during a hard rain, and they'll be out in that rain and not even in the shelter. You want that there as an option for them, but don't feel like you need to make so it's just so perfect for them that they absolutely won't feel any kind of discomfort or anything. That's not the way they are. They were designed and created to be able to take a lot of that harsh weather. Second test is to put this water bottle in there. Let's see what it is. It's right at about 86 degrees, so that's about six degrees cooler than yesterday. Something that your cows are obviously gonna need is gonna be a pasture, and it's really important to have the right fencing for that, and it's important they have enough pasture, and that's gonna be the deciding factor for a lot of people as to whether they should own a cow or not. If you have a really, really good pasture, you can put like one cow per acre, but that's gonna be really good pasture. I would recommend having at least two acres for a cow and that's also going to depend where you're at. In a lot of places like out west and stuff, you're going to need even more than that. And then for fencing, what's worked the best for me is having permanently divided pastures. So this front pasture here is divided into four paddocks. Permanent in the sense that it is still electric fencing, that it can be moved if I decide that it needs to be moved. But it's divided that way and connected to a common area up in the front so that all I gotta do is close one gate and open up the next to move them to another pasture. Literally takes like a minute and I'm done moving my cows. And also since there's this common area up here, their water can be in this common area and it's super easy to give them their water. There's no moving a water tank to each individual pasture and needing to take water buckets out there or stretch a hose out there or anything like that. And it makes it super doable for doing chores and actually my kids can then give the cows water every day. It's something that they can do and learn responsibility and be a helpful part of our homestead. This morning I'm using these four whiskey cubes. So the first day was 92 degrees with nothing in there. Second day was 86 with the water bottle. That got close down to like 87. Water bottle maybe makes it a little colder, but then tomorrow what we're gonna see is chilling the two buckets plus the stainless steel cubes. Now probably for most of you watching this, your pasture is not gonna be able to sustain your cows all year long. You're gonna need to be feeding them hay during the winter. And that's something that you're gonna have to get figured out before you get a cow. Because if you wait till winter comes, it could be really, really hard to find the hay that you need. And you're gonna have to be prepared for it also like my barn here is not big enough for me to store hay in it along with the cows. So I've had to get a little creative in how I do it. Now I have been really fortunate to find somebody that has round bales that will actually keep the round bales on their farm until I'm ready for them. So I just pick them up one at a time. I also have a father-in-law with a big barn that if I need to, I can buy hay and store it in his barn and then bring it over here as I need it. But that can be a real pain to have to handle it twice. Now the other option is, and that can work really well, is I've got a cargo trailer here that can hold a pretty good amount of hay that what I'll do is maybe I'll buy like 40 or 50 bales and load it in that trailer and just leave them in there and then use that as my hay barn. You're just gonna have to figure it out, but figure it out before you get the cow. Sitting right here beside my trailer is my tractor and that's something that people do ask also is do I need a tractor to have a cow? And I will say no, you do not need a tractor to own a cow. It is very handy. I've got some spikes on the bucket in front of that thing to be able to clean up the manure. That's really helpful, but it's not necessary. I hand cleaned up the manure and stuff for a long time before I got a tractor. 
cows are running out of grass in this front pasture, so I need to move them to the back. But I do have that one divided, like I've got this one up here. This is always a little scary though, because peaches is still wild. There's no fences going to the back pasture here. Never quite sure what she's gonna do. Oh, girl. Come on, peaches. Another thing that you have to prepare yourself for is that death is a part of life. And that sounds a little cold, but with having animals on a homestead, that is just the way it is. Our first cow got sick and she had to get put down. That was really sad. We've had calves that died. There you go. We also raise beef, so sometimes we'll raise our cow's calf and then we'll get it butchered when it's like two years old. And so for two years, we've taken care of that calf and then we have to take it in to get butchered. That kind of thing can be really sad. It can be really hard, but it is just the way it is and it is part of life. And you're gonna have to come to that reality if you're gonna be able to own a cow for yourself. One of the main things to being able to take care of your cow is having a little common sense. A lot of things just really aren't as complicated as what they sound like sometimes, especially like if you go on a Facebook group and ask a question and get a hundred different answers and they can be really good sometimes, but I think they can actually confuse people more than help them sometimes. And the thing about it is, is that most people are coming to those groups to ask a question about a problem they're having with their cow. If you're on there very often just scrolling, it can start to seem like everybody is always having a problem with their cow. And it really just isn't that way. What I would really advise for somebody who is just starting out is to maybe get away from the Facebook groups a little bit and find yourself a mentor, somebody in the flesh, somebody that you can call on the phone, whatever, but somebody who's had cows for a long time, somebody who can really walk alongside you with it. That is gonna help you more than anything. I always love putting my cows out on fresh pasture. They are really enjoying that fresh grass. I do need to get their water tank back here, but before I do that, and before I go back to the question of whether you should own a cow or not, Let's take a look at the final test for cooling the milk. I chilled these buckets in the freezer overnight. Then our four frozen stainless steel cubes. I honestly am not sure if the chilled buckets are gonna do that much because by the time we get out there and clean off the cow and things like that, they seem to not be too chilled, but might help a little bit. Okay, I've got between 87 and 88. Final results, first day without any ice was 92 degrees. Then we had 86 degrees with the water bottle, 87 to 88 with the ice cubes, and about the same with chilling the buckets and the ice cubes. So now even six degrees from with nothing to having ice doesn't seem like just a lot, but to me it's really important to get that milk chilling right away, giving it a jump start. Then once it goes through this strainer here, then it's gonna go through the freezer. Between doing the water bottle and the stainless steel cubes, I think it's worth it to me to have the stainless steel cubes because the stainless steel cubes are completely solid. There's no way that's gonna hold bacteria or anything. And that gets it really close to the same. And I think that is definitely the way to go. I think maybe what I'll do is just get another set of these to use. So do I think that you should get a cow? Having a cow I think is the best thing for me on our homestead, but it's also the hardest and the most stressful. I think that if you have the land and if you can take an honest look at this and say that you can overcome these challenges and you can be sure that this will fit into the lifestyle that you wanna create for you and your family, then go for it. I want to see you living your homestead dream. I want to see you thrive and succeed. And even though I think that those Facebook groups can tend to be pretty pessimistic sometimes and scare people a lot, it is true that your cow will end up getting sick sometimes. There will be complications sometimes. And there are things you should have on hand, especially right after calving. That's a really important time. And I did a video specifically about exactly what you need. And I even wrote out a checklist that you can print out so that you can make sure you've got everything on hand. That video is right here and you can click or tap on it to watch it next. I think it'll be really, really helpful for you. Because we're more than farmers. 